Evan Shalin of Epic Mind Studio in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Now today I wanted to do a fun battle of giants. In one corner, the Phase 1 IQ160, slightly dated back from 2011, currently my king of the house or of the roost in the studio, versus the Sony, his latest, I guess, flagship camera, the A7R Mark II or version 2, mounted with a 90 millimeter macro lens. Now, who's gonna win in this awesome boxing match? I don't know, we'll find out. So, I've set up over here, I grabbed from my couch this part of the, the leather, I guess, cushion. I put on a watch, I put on some detail-y stuff, some little flowery, dried stuff, I'm not too sure what it is, just to give some detail work. Let's see how it does for shadow and highlight recovery, as well as color renditions. I have uh, a bit of nail polish, a lip balm, and uh, a gray card in there just to complete the, uh, the package. So without further ado, let's jump behind the camera and start off with the Phase 1 IQ160 digital back. All right, so now behind the IQ160 with the Phase 1 645DF back, uh, let's take a quick shot and take a look in uh, Capture One Pro. I'm shooting at F16, ISO 50, which is the base ISO for that back. And let's look at the image resulting. I, praised, uh, I got the focus right on the, uh, this little bolt or whatever you want to call it, this little feature on this diesel watch. Obviously, you can see it's grimy, it's dirty. This is my own personal watch I decided to shoot. You can see a nice scratch there. So let's take a look at the different areas that we'll be focusing on. We'll be focusing on sharpness. So looking at the little striations here, the little nice machining marks. We'll be looking at the little dried vegetation here. <laughs> See how sharp it looks, looks pretty good. This, and I'm gonna leave, leave this, uh, the settings exactly as is in Capture One. I'm gonna try to not do anything except white balancing, that's about it. Um, so I'll switch now cameras, we'll put on the Sony, and once I shoot the image, we'll start comparing uh, one against the other. Now, just so you're gonna have to remember that with the uh, Sony, it's not, the, it's, a, it's a 35 millimeter format, meaning it's gonna actually be more landscape versus the square format of the 645 of the phase one. So I'm gonna to try to match as best as I can the, the look. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit of a difference, so keep that in mind. Also, depth of field is different. If I shoot at F16 on both, there'll be more apparent depth of field on the 35 millimeter system uh, because of the sensor size. So I'm not gonna be doing any focus stacking today. There's, there's a nice video, I did a two part series on that. We're just gonna look at, out of the camera, how do they perform? Um, so I'll be back in a second with the other camera. Okay, so I switched over the camera to the A7R II. Uh, Added my little flash controller from Paul C. Buff. I had to recompose the image, as I said, because it is wonky, the format. Uh, other thing is the exposure. I'm gonna set it to F16 exactly like I had my phase one. Let's take a look out of the box. Now, you gotta make sure to download the latest firmware for the A7R 2 which is firmware version two. It allows for uncompressed RAW. And I actually did this test, this whole recording a previous time, and I realized the results might have been skewed quite a bit in that, uh, in that way. So let's redo it, let's check it out, and let me take a shot. Um, Another very fun thing about the A7R versus the Phase 1 is the Phase 1 is like a classic DLS, DSLR or an SLR where a mirror is basically flapping open to expose the sensor. So what you're seeing is really like on a ground glass kind of way. So it's really what you see is what you get. While over here you got the digital EVF, which is like a mini computer screen. You can either look at it on the back or the minute you put your eye towards it, you can see the screen there. And what's wonderful is when you're in manual focus mode, you can actually zoom into the image. It will automatically zoom it in and you can pan through with the little knob at the back where you want to focus. And you can really get pinpoint sharp focus. So 
for macro work, this is spectacular. I mean, you can't get it wrong. It's like having a joint live view to, to focus on. Um, so now let's jump in behind the computer with Capture One and do an A and B uh, comparison of the two images. Now within Capture One, um, we got the two images. So if you look at the general images out of camera, there's a slight difference in exposure and obviously composition, unfortunately, but it's, I'd say it's close enough to give yourselves an idea. Now, obviously the watch face, I didn't pull out the little uh, do that over here, the crown, just to stop the watch, since I can't really easily do it on this type of watch. So bear with me, it's mainly just to see certain features, certain parts of it, not actual details of the what time it is of day. Um, okay, so first thing let's do is let's take a white balance reading off both and off the white card over here, white balance that, white balance that, so now they're both equal. So if I put them side by side, you can see the format difference is quite different. Um, yeah. So if I let's zoom in onto the spot where uh, I put the focus, which was at uh, the little what do you call it screw mount right over there, and compare one against the other. So uh, let's go to one hundred percent on that one and one hundred percent on that one. So detail wise, well, you can. Uh, Quickly see, I think, the resolution difference between the Phase 1 and the uh, Sony on the left. Um, and as I said, I sh I'm shooting raw, uncompressed. Uh, nothing's been done except for white balancing in Capture 1. Um, there's a hell of a lot of resolution, I find, on the uh, Phase 1. Um, actually, more than my initial test, so that's kind of strange. I'm also debating if I screwed up the focus, but I'm looking, I think everything's generally more focused and just more detailed on uh, out of camera now uh, from the phase one. Now, obviously, the depth of field is quite different. Look at the <laughs> how much blurrier it is on the right versus the left. Again, I can try reshooting this, like, say, at f11, and you might say, well, it could be diffraction that's reducing the quality of the lens. You're right, it could be. Um, I can try doing that right now. Let me just do that. Okay, so now in Capture One, let's compare the F11 shot Sony versus the F16 shot Phase One. So let's start off with the uh, screw portion over here. <laughs> Check it out. And what I did to make it a little bit more even is that I know that Phase One cooks their images ever so slightly in sharpness and stuff using uh, the sharpness tool here. So if I go to the Phase One, uh, let me just put it by... I could put no, let's put no sharpening. Let's take a look at how it looks and put no sharpening on the, no sharpening on the Sony and compare how they look. I'd say quite favorably, they look very much the same. I mean, the amount of details, perhaps a little bit more because the high resolution of the uh, phase one back, but I'm looking at the striation data, or the detail is pretty good. Let's look at the little dirt marks over here. You can basically see the same stuff. Pretty nice. Look at the crown, a little fuzz over here, or a little piece of fur, I'm not too sure what that is. The little fingerprints, looking around. Out of camera, oops, go back to 100% on this guy and keep it comparing. Um, the number, seems like the depth of field is slightly getting shallower here, but who cares, it's trying to get a similar feel. I guess it's close, I don't know why it's, doing that because I'm moving my mouse and let's put phase one to 100% so really we get one to one for everything okay let's go look at the little uh, bushiness over here a little dried vegetation and let's pixel peep until our heart's content I don't know about you guys, but what I'm finding this is actually pretty darn amazing out of the Sony I mean the only thing the Sony so far has doesn't have a, against the uh, phase one is just the ultimate resolution but that's about it but just detail retention i'd say it's quite spectacular very very nice um so what we can look at is just the color also out of the bats look at the revlon over here quite close 
Is it exactly the same? No, I'd say it's a little bit more red pink on the phase one versus the slightly more orangey red looking on the uh, Sony. Doesn't bother me. I mean, obviously, some of for, for fashion work, you know, you'll have a color card and make sure everything's right and go through the art director. So now it comes to the fun stuff. Let's try to compare uh, the shadow recovery. So let's try to see if we can get back some leather from in front of the watch. So let's zoom in on both. And let's start with the phase one. Let's go to the shadow recovery tool and let's start boosting it up. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if we can get something from the background there. All right, there's a little bit going on. You can see a little bit of dirt. It almost looks like a microscope image. Let's do the same on the Sony. Let's bring up the shadows. There you go. I'd say, wow, that is amazing. That is really, really good. It looks the same, if not maybe better. A little bit better. You can see the nice uh, bouncing of the refraction of the, what do you call it, the lipstick on the left. Um, it's quite good. Look at this. You got, you'd say the exposure is maybe a bit more on the Sony. So let's try pushing the images even more. So let's put it about there and let's put it about there for the same. I mean, I see actually more noise, I think, in the phase one image than I actually see in the Sony image. So let's move around, see what we can get. I mean, it's quite, quite good. Let's look at another area. Let's look into the actual band. Can we see? Well, look at the amount of noise in the actual phase one image. I'm really, really surprised. Now, there's even some green splotches. Looks like some form of banding is starting to break or the image is breaking. So I'm not too sure um, what's going on there. And uh, yeah, I mean, at least the noise on the phase one is pleasant, but there's pretty much no noise on the uh, Sony. So do I have a winner on this side? Oh, well, I'd say the uh, Sony, I think, might have won on this one for sheer beauty of the image. I mean, it's it's really impressive. The When I did the test last time, actually, I, I made a mistake. Well, two mistakes. I did the uh, test out of a JPEG <laughs> image, and I compared it to uh, with the un, or uncompressed uh, RAW as well. And there was banding. There was noise. It just didn't look right. I'm like, no, there's something wrong. I spoke to Alex, and he said, oh, did you try the new firmware? Well, I did that, and uh, now the proof's in the pudding. Quite nice. So let's look again somewhere else, maybe in the uh, other part of the image. Let's look over here. What's going on there? And I me, mean, it's the noise levels that are just so, there's no noise in the uh, just Sony, are very, very little. Wow, beautiful. The details come back up. Let's look in the, maybe in the crevice over here. I mean, obviously got a hell of a lot more resolution in the uh, phase one. And that's one of the main selling points, but also detailed retention in the shadows and stuff. And really, Sony is doing great. Now let's take a look. Let's put it back to the beginning. All right, reset everything. And now let's check for highlight retention or how we can bring back some details there. Um, now. Let's start again with the phase one. Let's boost the highlights to the max. Okay, and do the same to the Sony. Well, if you look, there's a weird kind of uh, color fringing happening in the phase one, like a magenta cast. It's just happened there, a little color cast as well there. The Sony, no, not at all. No color cast, no nothing. So. Pretty good. I'm looking over here too, and right above that screw point, there's again some color, weird color happening. The Sony, not at all. I'm very, very impressed by the camera. Moving along, moving along, looking at the detail. Very nice. Look over here. Get back there. 
Anyways. Highlights. I'd say it's on par and better than the phase one. That's my conclusion there. So there you have it, boys and girls. <laughs> it's quite crazy. I mean, we have we shouldn't forget that, you know, the technologies are still a few years apart. I'm not comparing the latest phase one back, which does use a CMOS sensor, just like the Sony does, because the IQ160 uses a CCD based sensor. Um, so it is an older technology. It's one that's not very good for noise levels, but um, still for the price difference, wow. Um, Color-wise, again, not bad at all. What's the conclusion of this battle? I'd say the Sony has won pretty much by knockout. Um, I, I'm blown away. Totally, totally blown away. I did not expect it. I mean, I, I've heard the camera's been great, but seriously, for a camera that's going around 3,000 US, the lens is about, I think, 1,000 around there. So you're talking about around $4,000 versus a camera that generally, yes, it is old. Don't get me wrong. Some people are going to say, well, you're not comparing apples to apples. You're right. I'm not using the latest XF body with the latest uh, IQ 260 back or 250 back with the CMOS sensor, uh, the 250, I believe. But crap, it's still going to be a, a 10 time price difference or approximately there. I mean, I spent a lot of money and a lot of budget on my phase one. And I still, I love the ability that I can crop. And in properly exposed images, it, the cropping is, is worth a lot to me. I mean, I do a lot of big prints. My clients enjoy the fact that they can crop my images. Now, Sony, the rumor has it that there might be a very large megapixel SLR type camera coming out in the coming months. Let's see what's gonna, what's gonna come out of that. Are they going to be the giant crusher? Is it David versus Goliath? I don't know. But you guys should really take a look at the new Sony a7R2 with the 90mm lens if you're doing any small product studio work. Killer camera. Not only that, the autofocus system on this camera is spectacular. The EVF is spectacular. The in-camera stabilization is spectacular. The low noise is spectacular. There's a lot of spectacular things. So I think right now, We've got ourselves a, you know, quite a beautiful uh, camera on our hands. So, guys, try this out. Save your money. This could be a very nice little holiday gift for yourselves. And uh, until then, happy shooting.